Welcome back to Not So Grand Garage. I'm uh, outside today and we're out here looking at my generator as I got quite a few questions on it after uh, putting the short out the other day when we lost power for most of the day. Uh, you can see we had some storms come through. Got the neighbor over there, he's got the excavator out clearing trees. But, uh, well, out of the field anyways. But yeah, so I've got some changes to make out here after uh, kind of pressure testing this setup. It uh, works really well, but there's a few flaws in, in my setup and I'm gonna change those. In this video, I'm gonna go over how it's set up, how I've got it wired in currently, and some of the changes I'll be making. Let's get at it. Excuse the mess piled up around it. That is one of the things that's going to be getting taken care of today. But this unit is an MEP 003A. It's 10 kilowatt rated, uh, which that is military rating on these. Uh, the same unit on a, with a civilian rating uh, sold by Onan was 12,500 watt, which I personally know several people who've pushed these over 14,000 without an issue. Um, probably wouldn't do it for long periods, but it will handle the, it'll handle it just fine. But anyways, um, I picked this unit up used, uh, as you can see, sitting at 767 hours right now. Um, when I got it, it didn't run. There's videos of me getting this unit running, uh, on the YouTube channel already. It's back from when, uh, when I was really doing anything with this channel, I was just sharing videos. But uh, yeah, things I've done, got it running. I converted the fuel side to spin on filters. I have not converted the oil side to a spin on filter yet, but uh, got it all cleaned up, painted it, got it functional. And as I said, you can see all those videos of me getting it running and everything on the channel already. So one of the issues I ran into right off uh, the other night was I went to start this thing and the batteries were dead and that was my fault the batteries didn't just run dead I had pulled one of them to use it for something else uh, the diesel heater in the shed and me being me I forgot to charge it back up and it was weak it wasn't completely dead but being as it's a 24 volt setup it needs both batteries to be fairly equal and it wouldn't crank over wouldn't do hardly anything so I have no way to have a charger out here without running an, an extension cord up from the house and I don't like that idea. So I want power out here. I want a 110 volt circuit out here so I can have some basic lighting and a battery maintainer on this generator at all times. So that's one of the changes we're gonna be making. But uh, yeah, let's go into how I've got this thing hooked up. As you can see, there's some fairly large conduit coming up out of the ground over and into the top side of the main connection panel. That uh, conduit runs underground all the way up to the house. We've got a 60 amp breaker right here. That is coming from the generator. Uh, I do not have an interlock on this yet, but uh, yeah, in due time, I was planning on making some changes, so I haven't added that to it. I do have one. Uh, but yeah, so power comes in out front. We've got 400 amp main service that comes into the property. Uh, 200 amp that is split to the house. Then another 200 amp service. Well, same service, but another 200 amp main that is split to feed 200 amp, two 100 amp panels. One in the shop and one is that back panel right there. That panel used to just be power for a large package AC unit that was for the addition on the back of the house. Um, a couple years ago, I ripped that out and we replaced it with two large mini split setups. And 
they don't pull nearly the power so instead i ripped that out put that panel in there and uh yeah opened me up for a lot of things that i could do one of which was to back or to run the generator to that panel and then everything that is important to the house i ran separate circuits for them to that panel so that panel right there can be isolated and power refrigerators freezers lights uh, security so on and so forth uh, it's very nice to have it that way and it was simple for me to set it up that way but uh yeah so we've got 60 amp breaker coming from that panel to the generator so what i'm going to do is instead of having it run directly to the generator i'm going to set up a sub panel out here and have that 60 amp breaker feed that sub panel in that sub panel is going to be uh, a 60 amp breaker to disconnect this generator a 30 amp breaker to uh, be able to tie in our 8700 watt uh, auction generator that we picked up the little gas one i'm going to have it set up out here as well so we've got two large generators two different fuel sources i can run whichever um, and then i'll have openings for two 110 volt circuits that uh, i can use for lighting battery charger what have you so yeah you also see i've got this 3500 watt predator inverter type generator i got several of these units uh, from the same auction that i got that bigger uh, 8750 watt uh, contractor grade generator from and got all those running as well this uh, little predator one i've had for a while it was uh, purchased to actually be mounted on the bus at some point which it will get there but i've also got it set up back here where i can tie in and feed this 30 amp breaker right here what does that do that powers this circuit this circuit this circuit this circuit i've got it set up that way for a reason um, i can power my refrigerator my freezer security stuff like that off of the quiet little 3500 watt fuel sipper if i need to but when we need to uh, run the hot water heater heat and air uh, pull larger loads we can run the big units uh, and it just uh, gives me options for how I can power the, the property in an emergency. And uh, it's come in handy a few times. These little inverter generators, they are really quiet. Uh, I can have this thing running back here. I can walk out front and you can't hear it running. So that can be handy for a lot of things, uh, such as the other night when the power was out. I didn't want to let the MEP generator run for hours on end uh, after you know nine ten o'clock at night because you can hear that thing running from half a mile away probably it is loud it wasn't designed to be quiet so we uh, we were able to hook up the or we were able to power the hot water heater and the heat and air get the house comfortable be able to take hot showers stuff like that shut that big unit down and fired up the little inverter unit and powered our lights our refrigerators stuff like that and uh yeah it was simple keeps things quiet and uh makes the neighbors that are a ways off even though most of my neighbors are a good ways off uh keeps them happy so draw less attention things like that but uh anyways that's kind of how I've got this set up and yeah I'll go over a little more detail on the changes I'm gonna make so back to one of the first changes I'm gonna make on this setup instead of the uh, 60 amp feed coming in directly to the generator I'm going to come down I'm gonna dig the conduit up over to this corner and I'm going to uh, have it run to this panel this is a, it does not have a main breaker in it. Whew, that wind is brutal. 
So I'm going to just use this essentially as a sub panel. I will have a 60 amp breaker that will then run to the generator separately. I have a 30 amp breaker, which will be for this box right here. So I can tie in the gas generator. And I've got two spaces left for either I could put another 220 circuit in, which I'm not going to, or two 120 volt circuits for, uh, which I'll probably only use one of those for lights and uh, battery charger, things like that. So I'll be able to work out here pretty easily and we'll be able to keep the batteries on the generators maintained easily. Uh, I can even put a transfer pump in. So I've got a, I've got a, a fuel drum out here for this generator. I usually have like a manual pump or something set up so I can fill cans and everything like that. Come over here, fill the tank on the generator. But I'm gonna be changing the fuel system on this thing too. But yeah, so I'm not gonna to get too much into actually making the changes on this video. Just kind of wanted to go over the little details on how it's currently set up. Um, it is, as you saw, or could probably see, this generator is mounted on a concrete pad that we poured. It's anchored down. Uh, everything else is just dirt. So I'm going to get all this mess cleaned up out of here. And uh, the next part of this is the noise. Uh, I do have a pile of building materials sitting over here. And we are going to basically turn this into our emergency power shack. Um, obviously, I won't have all my eggs in one basket, but I'm going to enclose this. There will be an air inlet and an air outlet, possibly a powered exhaust fan system in here because this is an air-cooled unit. Even the gas one is an air-cooled as well. So I will need air moving through here. I will have to run exhaust outside, but I'm going to fully enclose this and insulate it really well so hopefully that's gonna help reduce the noise uh, I do have some little things like I got the little screw hole up here in the roof tin and stuff like that because all this metal was uh, was salvaged but anyways got a lot of little things to do as far as that is concerned but yeah the goal is to turn this into a a walled off room that's well insulated I can lock it up, so on and so forth, and uh, yeah, but I'm rambling, so I'm going to knock this off here and uh, start on doing the electrical upgrades. Hopefully this wind isn't messing with the video, but we'll see. Anyways, uh, if you want to support the channel, there's a PayPal account set up, links in the video description. Uh, if you've got any comments, questions, complaints, drop them in the comments section. Uh, anything on this setup or what have you, I will try to answer those as I can. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, hit that thumbs up button. It helps us out. Uh, and it doesn't cost you anything. If you want, please subscribe. We appreciate you watching.